open world games are full of tons of areas. Some not necessarily worth seeing, but some of it very much is. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 secret areas worth exploring in open world games. Starting off at number 10 is Mirdrin's Cave from Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This unassuming cave in the Hampshire region hides a huge secret, and one of the most difficult to get weapons in the entire game as well. Hidden inside is a ruin, the ancient, advanced super civilization so much the lore of Assassin's Creed revolves around, and also a locked vault. The only way to open it is to insert 11 tablets hidden from around the open world. Uh, there are actually 12, but the first one you get free just for finding this place. The game doesn't really tell you where these things are outside of some vague clues, so actually trying to find all 11 tablets by just naturally exploring takes a long time. Even when you're following a guide, it is a lot of stuff to collect just to open a single vault, but the reward is very much worth it. It's literally the Excalibur, King Arthur's mythical sword. Some of these tablets you have to find in hidden places, while some of them are held by like zealots in the order. They're pretty difficult, so for a lot of people, getting this weapon won't be an option until you're pretty far into the game. But it is worth it. It is obviously very powerful. But it also gets a slight boost for being, you know, a really big sword. Still, the fact that the game makes it possible to wield both the Excalibur and Thor's hammer at the same time is pretty awesome. At number 9 is the UFO crash site from Fallout 4. There are a lot of cool unmarked locations in Fallout 4, but there's one that really stands out, the UFO crash site. What makes it so great is that they put in the extra work even compared to the UFO found in Fallout 3. This spot doesn't just have a unique gun to find, there's a whole unique new enemy to deal with, and it only appears in this one location in the entire game. What's interesting about this location is that it only becomes available after you hit level 20. At that point, you can see a random event where a UFO will come crashing out of the sky. Um, actually seeing it can be kind of difficult, but you can tell what's going on from hearing some explosions in the distance and a smoke trail in the sky. The actual crash site can be found southeast of the Oberlin station, where you can find an alien ship that's on fire and half buried in the ground. There's nothing to actually get here, but if you look around a little, you'll notice a trail of green blood leading directly to a nearby cave. This is the part that's really easy to miss as the cave that's unmarked on the map, but if you're observant enough to follow the clues, you'll be face to face with an enemy that only appears here, the alien. Yep, these guys appeared in Fallout 3, but this is the only one in Fallout 4. He's got a unique model and different damage effects and everything. Killing him probably won't be too difficult, and when you do, you get this sweet alien blaster for your troubles, along with a random amount of ammo. It's pretty much the only blaster ammo you'll get in the base game, so use it sparingly. In Nuka World, they can give you some more, but outside of the hundred or so you get from this quest in the area, that's all you ever get. This location has everything you want in a secret area, a memorable event event, a new weapon, and even a unique enemy. It, it's a good one. At number 8 is the Statue Cave in Red Dead Redemption 2, a location in Red Dead 2 that is worth finding, not just because it's interesting, but because the rewards are very good. RDR 2 has a ton of weird and interesting locations to explore, but they only usually reward you with cosmetics or a unique gun, while this place gives you nothing but stone cold cash and a lot of it. This weird cave can be found a little north of the Hobbit House in Amberino in an unmarked cave. Inside is kind of a surreal site, a bunch of statues in a circle with like little buttons on their pedestals you can push. There aren't any real clues for this puzzle anywhere nearby. The actual big clue is hidden at an entirely different location, Window Rock. If you actually wanted to solve this puzzle legitimately, that's where you had to go, but the whole thing's so obscure that I can't imagine a lot of people really bothering. To make a confusing puzzle easy, you just have to press the buttons for statues with two, three, five, and seven fingers. Do that, and it unlocks the base at the center statue, which is where you collect three gold bars. Each of these things worth 500 bucks a piece, which is a lot in Red Dead Redemption 2. The Statue Cave is probably the most lucrative secret area in the game, but there's plenty of interesting spots to check out as well. There are few AAA games out there like RDR2, and it is filled with interesting secrets. At number 7 is the Abandoned Mine from GTA 5. Uh, you're not going to get like a huge reward or a special weapon for the, finding this spot. It just stands out in a game series that doesn't really do secret areas outside of the Statue of Liberty from 4. And it's the final step to solving a murder mystery. It also unlocks some vintage filters for your camera. But that's nothing really to write home about per se. It's just cool and creepy and the mine entrance is located off a dirt road in the Great Chaparral Mountains. And the only 
way to get inside is by blasting it open with explosives. I think this place sparked the imagination of a lot of players who found it in the older, unenhanced version of GTA V, so Rockstar made it possible to explore with the later edition. And while there's not a whole lot to actually find in here, it's got a really spooky atmosphere and feels really unique compared to any other location in the game. At the first fork, you'll find the body of Isaac, an actor from the 1940s whose story's wrapped up in the whole murder mystery plot you can unravel. It's pretty weird and mysterious, just like a lot of stuff in Rockstar games. Um, they love hiding secrets and Easter eggs in their games. Even if the payoffs aren't always the best thing, they're usually pretty interesting just on their own. At number six is the Mile High Club in Just Cause 4. This place is a major location from Just Cause 2, a floating club that you could check out wherever you wanted, and was one of the most unique locations in any open world game. It has appeared in some form in Just Cause 3 and 4 as well, but as Easter eggs rather than full-blown location. For us, at least, the appearance in Just Cause 4 is probably the most interesting as a secret location. It's not floating anymore, sadly, but you can find it built into the side of a mountain in the northern part of the map in the Umina region. It's southeast from the city of Villanueva. It looks pretty obvious being a big white block built into a jungle mountain, but just remember how huge the map for this game actually is. There is so much empty space. If some place isn't marked on the map, it is easy to overlook. Go inside, you'll find a pretty sad looking club actually. There's a guy in a blue bodysuit and the infamous Bolo Santosi, the character everyone remembers from one of the first missions of Just Cause 2, the DJ. Uh, the whole place is really ridiculous, but it's cool that they added it in. Just Cause 4 is filled with weird as hell Easter eggs, like that secret room, the take on me secret. There's just a ton of these things, and they're all worth checking out. At number 5 is the secret crash site from Far Cry 4. At this point, most of you guys probably know about the secret ending to Far Cry 4. Both of them, in fact. You know what we're talking about. The one where if you just do what you're told at the very start and just wait for Peg and Min to come back, you're taken to the end game location where you can spread your mom's ashes and complete your mission right there. That's well known, along with the secret ending where you can complete and still kill Peg and Min. Normally, if you don't just kill him at the dinner table, which gets you a very abrupt ending, he'll tell you a big secret and then get in a helicopter and escape. Doesn't seem like you can do anything, but if you're quick enough, it's actually possible to switch to a rocket launcher and fire it at the helicopter, blowing him up. For a lot of people, the end game is there. But there's actually one more thing you can do. After the end credits, it's possible to return to Pagan's compound. Doesn't seem like you can go back, but if you use an explosive on the gate, you can blast it open. Travel a little further down the road, you can find a spot where the helicopter crashed. Beside it is his corpse, which you can actually loot to get his golden pen, which he used during the opening cutscene to kill a subordinate. You also get a lapel pin and a bunch of money, but at this point the actual rewards don't really mean a whole lot. It's just a cool secret that lets you confirm with 100% certainty that Pagan Min is definitely dead. Before this little secret, you never actually saw his corpse after the ending, so it's presumable he could have survived, but with all this, it's clear. He's very, very dead. At number four is O'Hara's Haunted House from Far Cry 5, a place that's not the most secretive in the world. It's a prepper stash location, like basically any other, but what makes it interesting is how much more elaborate and fun it is compared to the other prepper stashes in the game, which are relatively normal when you explore them. Instead of being a bunker or a boarded up house, this place is a still functional haunted house. It's located beside the Hanbrain River Rail Bridge that borders John and Faith's regions. So you actually get inside this place, you first have to flip a switch in a nearby house to turn the power on, and after that you're free to enter through the front door. The place itself is pretty amusing, it's filled with creepy tableaus and jump scares, but there's a surprising level of effort that's gone into what's just a little area that players might completely miss. Getting through this place is not difficult, it's just fun to explore and see what goofy jump scare or spooky thing they'll throw at you next. Hopefully with Far Cry 6 coming soon we'll see even more cool little areas like this, you know, places that make open world games just more fun to be in. And number three is a Royal Flush Plaza secret room from Dead Rising 2. Uh, basically an absolute classic of a secret area in an open world game. Dead Rising had a few little secrets around, but the sequel really upped the ante. One of the best and hardest to find secret areas in the whole Dead Rising series can be found right in the first major area of the game, the Royal Flush Plaza. This is a spot that's both really satisfying to find, as well as has some great rewards that make the early parts of the game a lot easier. Once you know where to look, getting 
this place is not too hard. You just get in the big central room of the mall and get up to the second floor with the sport trans shop. There's a nearby telephone booth that you can climb on top of, which lets you reach this concrete on it. Keep traveling from there, you get to this open window beside a balloon. Inside, it looks like somebody's been using the area for poker games, but there's a lot of useful stuff to find, like a sniper rifle and dynamite. What's great about this location is pretty much anybody can find it. It's not incredibly well hidden, but it's really satisfying when you manage to get up there. It feels like you're doing something you're not supposed to, even though the area was built specifically so that you can. It is great. At number two is World 1-1 from Dying Light. It is both an area to explore and a great and useful reward. The whole thing, it's weird as hell, but it's one of the best secrets in any open world game we've seen. On the southern part of the map of Old Town, the second area in the game, there's an unassuming brick building with an unusual secret in one of the chimneys. There is a green pipe. Interact with it twice to get transported to World 1-1, like from the original Mario game, World 1-1. The whole place is ugly as hell and clearly slapped together, but that just makes the whole thing even weirder. You can get through this place pretty easily by running forward and parkouring your way through, but there's actually a secret invisible block hidden in there with a special blueprint. The only way to activate it is to Mario style literally jump around until you hit it and it appears, and then you climb on top of it and you unlock the Pisa suit, which works exactly like the raccoon suit from Mario 3. It allows you to fly through the air for a short period of time before you fall. All in all, it is a great great, if incredibly goofy secret area that gets you a completely awesome reward. And finally is the Secret Garden from Shadow of the Colossus. This one is epic both in scale and difficulty. Uh, the entire premise of Shadow of the Colossus is that you're this little guy taking on gigantic enemies and you do it by climbing them. They're that big. And the most important location in the game is the enormous temple called the Shrine of Worship that you return to every time you defeat a Colossus. It is huge. Anyone who plays the game will probably at some point or another attempt to climb the walls of this place. For most people, they won't get too far. It's just a two tall of a climb with the amount of stamina that you have but if you're willing to play through the game multiple times and I mean a lot of times like three at least in order to max out your stamina it is actually possible to climb up this thing and find a secret location known as the guard it's the place seen at the end of the game but the only way you can get up here during the gameplay is this and there's not much to find except for some fruit and if you eat that fruit it actually lowers your maximum health yeah that's your reward for getting all the way up there lower max HP there is a reason for this in the lore of the game but still that is that's rough even if the reward isn't what you would expect the secret garden is one of the most mysterious and difficult to reach areas in any open world game and that's all for today leave us a comment let us know what you think if you like this video click like if you're not subscribed now is a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week best way to see them first is of course a subscription as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero and we'll see you next time right here on game ranks